Kyle here from All Media Reviews. Today is uh, November 17th, 2023. Um, Jeff Buckley would have turned 57 years old. Um, happy birthday, Jeff Buckley, etc. Um, listen to some Jeff Buckley. The uh, I woke up to the news and a lot of people now reading that among Dream Theater fans, progressive rock fans, progressive metal fans, etc. that um, the... You know, un unforeseen passing of, of Dream Theater's first singer, not their original singer, but their first singer, uh, Charlie Dominici. Maybe his name should be always Dominici. I, I heard it pronounced Dominici. I don't remember what, what video it was, a bootleg, or maybe it was I think that Mike Portnoy. Because I'll, I'll have Portnoy's statement. He does say to share the news of the passing of former Dream Theater singer Charlie Dominici. Dominici. Charlie was the voice of DT on her debut album when Dream and Day Unite, recorded back in 1988. Beyond being a great singer, he was also an incredibly talented songwriter and well-rounded musician on both guitar and keyboards. While we parted ways with him in late 1989, he always remained a friend, fronting the band that played at mine and Marlene's wedding. 1994, reuniting with Dream Theater and with Dream Day Unite's 15th anniversary show in 2004. Opening for Dream Theater in Europe, the solo band 2007, and coming to see myself in JP and our, on our tour together in 2022, I was texting with him as recently as a few weeks ago, and he texted me to congratulate me on my return to Dream Theater on the day of the announcement. He was so happy and excited for us all. Charlie's unexpected passing is a tremendous loss to everyone in the Dream Theater family. We wish to extend our deepest sympathies to the uh, Dominici family during this immensely difficult time. If you haven't seen our... Yeah, okay. There's a documentary called um, I Can Remember When, um, that I first got it, probably it was on, it was one of the, the record shows of the bootleg dealers the, on video, I still probably have it, so, um, yeah, um, this, you know, he's, he, talking about Charlie, he was, of course, when Dream and Day Unite, the debut album from Dream Theater that came out on, um, MCA and, and at, was it Atco Mechanic Records, 1989 um we've got a couple copies right here this is uh the re-release which i forget what year this was it was sometime in the early 2000s it was a limited it was a limited edition which i remember the production they remixed it or something sounded different with this one um it's like laminated and stuff and right up there um you know um People, a lot of people know this stuff because the Dream Theater are a fanatical band. This is, I think, is my original, probably my original CD. I, I can't be certain that I purchased in, um, it looked like this, I remember that. 1990, 1995, sometime that summer, um, early summer, probably, or maybe in late spring. Um, I also have, he had his, he did after he left Dream Theater, um, I'm not sure what he immediately did, I forget, but he surfaced, it was sometime in the kind of mid-2000s, but uh, to do these like trilogy of albums, and under the name Dom Dominici, I'm, I'm going to always think of his name being pronounced Dominici, but um, just like my people's names are different, but um, Dom D Dominici did a trilogy of concept albums, and I remember checking them out, like, downloading them. But this is the one that I, I bought. This is from 2005. The um, OA Trilogy, the first part, which the reason why I, and this is the one that I, I, I appreciate the most because it's like all acoustic. Um, I thought that it was more interesting for him to do that. He did release two more parts of this, which I don't know if I ever even listened to the third one. Maybe. The second one, though, I remember checking out and it was like prog metal and it was just it, was, it sounded like James Labrie's Elements of Persuasion a lot of it like um but yeah so he the thing about Charlie Dominici I was just going to say that you know when he joined the band they'd already written a lot of the music for when, when Dream of Day Unite this demo here this instrumental recordings that I got this bootleg has um if I'm if I'm not mistaken with this another bootleg, I'm pretty sure. Pretty much almost all when Dream and Day Unite instrumentally, and so what I did a few times, 
I would go to these sci-fi conventions where they had karaoke machines, and I would bring this with, and I'd do karaoke to the to some of them were Dream of Day Unite songs, like Fortune and Lies and Status Seeker and um, uh, Afterlife and um, Afterlife, ironically. <laughs> Only a Matter of Time, that's the Kevin Morpen lyric. Um, I mean, it, it, it feels a little bit like in a little way, like what happened with Rush and John Runcy, where obviously he he's not thought of in the core uh, history of Dream Theater, but um, you know, obviously he was the front. He fronted the band on their first album. There, he wasn't their first singer when they were known as Majesty. He was the first singer under Dream Theater. The, Majesty had a, their original singer was this guy named Chris Collins, who very much resembled to me and sounded a fair amount like John Arch of Fate's Warning time that was in 80 whatever 86 85 or at least 86 um but chris collins eventually parted ways with them or they parted ways with him and they found charlie but it's noted and, and most people know this but the the difference in the age gap between him and um the other guys was pretty substantial um considering this album came out in 1989 charlie dominici would have been 38 years old. He was born in 1951. Well, Mike Portnoy and the other guys, I believe, like at least Portnoy and Petrucci and I think my young, were all born in 1967. 66 or 67. I mean, they're all that, like, Kevin Gilbert was that, was a similar age. He was born in 66. A lot of these people, I, these musicians of that age, so the, there was like a 16-year age gap between the three, between him and the, the other band members. Um, I'm not sure Kevin Moore. I think Kevin Moore is about the same age, too, as the guys. Because I remember, I think it was that uh, John Mayung knew Kevin Moore growing up. So if I'm not mistaken, some of the Dream Theater history um, that I I try to pride myself on, but, you know, there are people that know, know it more to the letter than I do. But um, So he was like 37 when he joined the band. And, you know, he had been in previous bands, I believe, um, but never did like prog rock, prog metal, you know, so, um, but, you know, 72 years old, he, um, he, he's a friend of mine, you know, Christian, I know, posted, shared a link with me of him doing like a, um, tambourine man, was it Bob Dylan, I believe, and then the, was it the Birds originally, that Birds covered that, or I forget who it was, covered that and made it more famous, he's, he'd been doing that on YouTube, and you know, I don't know if he had some kind of health condition. You know, he wasn't young, obviously, but um, you think about him and even Jordan Rudis, who was the oldest member of Dream Theater for a long time, he, you know, goes back. He Jordan was born in 56, so he's still five years younger than Charlie, even. So, um, it's weird, you know, like when John Rutsey passed away, that was like 15 years ago. So a member of Rush is gone. Obviously, Neil passed away a few years ago. Now a member of Dream Theater is, is no longer a forum member. You know, it's it's kind of eerie to think, but um, it's too bad. I don't know. You know, I mean, I've always had a soft spot for this record. Um, and like I was going to mention, not not to forget that, um, when I became a fan, you know, in effect, I mean, I knew Pull Me Under, but um, in effect it was May of 95. They only had three albums. The Change of Seasons hadn't even come out, so they had the live album, but... So I listened to this album a ton, and actually, I gravitated toward this. I mean, I loved images and words, but I kind of was leaning toward this because being the Rush fan, this reminded me the most of Rush. Charlie's voice actually resembled Getty a little in some ways. I mean, it you know, compared to Awake especially, and even images and words, this was more in the Rush vein than those two albums in a lot of ways. So um, it, it, this became kind of a favorite of mine, you know, and I... I over the years, even back in like the early 2000s, but especially the last decade, when you talk about Dream Theater, Dream Theater fan base, they just, they blow this record off. They don't really talk about it. I've mentioned this before. It's just, is it underrated? I, I never felt like this. I mean, it's a debut album. If you listen to the Majesty demos, which I have also here, this thing. This is a big jump up from this in a lot of ways, um, production-wise. The songwriting, a lot of, the songwriting is really pretty good. And the production is of what it is at the time in 1988, 89 when they're making this. But I just think that this, while it's not my favorite Dream Theater album, when people put this at the bottom or toward the bottom, I just, you know, 
being maybe it's sort of some, some sort of a nostalgia and sentimentality and you know this is one of the first things that got me into the band but i still think it holds up produced by terry date who later would work with dredge of all bands um and i just think actually in a lot of ways i mean the bass lines are are really great a lot of ways it's just from a songwriting standpoint one of their best records i think the songs from song even some of the more odd ones like the ones who helped helped us at the sun and light fusing getaway were growers and all, songs that I grew to like, and Charlie was a big part about the, of that. I mean, it was the band itself, of course, but Charlie brought something that added a lot to those songs. Um, you know, if I was going to listen to the, when, the the performance, there's of course the When Dream and Day reunite, or there's a version that I think Labrie sang all these songs live. I still like Charlie's better. I mean, as much as I love Labrie and most Dream Theater, you got to hear Labrie's voice. Um, I lean toward. Uh, Charlie's version, so it's it's really sad to see him passing, but I don't know again uh, the circumstances that might eventually come out. But um, you know, rest in peace, Charlie Dominici. <laughs> if I've said your name all these years wrong, I'm really sorry about that. I you know I, I heard I think it was either Petrucci or one of the other members pronounce it Do Dominici or D Dominici. Um, I always remember actually the one of the bootleg videos I've got when Dream Theater covered um, Carry That Weight. Um, by the Beatles, and I don't, I don't think I really was that familiar with that song, and then when I heard him sing that, it kind of kind of converted me, like, oh no, this is a brilliant piece, why, why need to listen to Abbey Road? I didn't even realize it was on Abbey Road at the time, probably, which is like my 95, 96, but um, some of the Beatles stuff I got into later, after hearing a lot of the stuff earlier, my parents don't, my mom specifically, wasn't a fan of the later Beatles much, she loved the early stuff, but, but Dream Theater, of course, Portnoy being a huge Beatles fan, and you know probably Charlie and the other guys, um, they covered the Beatles. They covered uh, Golden Slumbers and Carry That Weight. But um, yeah, no, this is um, it's too bad. I you know, rest in peace, Charlie. You know, um, I don't know if he would have done anything more. I, th I think I'll have to revisit this record from 2005, the first of the, the trilogy. And I don't like have any favorites specifically, but. Um, it's mostly him and an acoustic guitar, but there's good dynamics, and some of the lyrics are interesting. It's sort of a, uh, it's a concept. It's, I don't know if it's sci-fi exactly, but, um, let me get a picture in here. Um, you know, I mean, and I never, having really heard his other stuff, I think I remember now where they talked about his, where I learned about his background more in detail. It was in those, I've got those books in the other room, the, um, Images and Words, Dream Theater Biography by Rich uh, Wilson. Um, talk about his previous bands, and he had been in uh, several bands. I don't know how many of them recorded music, but, you know, it wasn't, again, it wasn't like, you know, like Dream Theater. They, they compared him to Billy Joel, which is ironic how Billy Joel actually had a progressive rock background. You listen to songs like, um, like, <laughs> Scenes from Italian Restaurant, but, um, of course, Billy Joel's known as a sort of a singer-songwriter, piano ballad guy, but, um... No, it's uh, sad just to learn of the passing of Charlie Dovinici, but, um, you know, there's still the music to listen to and the memories. And um, Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and we'll see you next time.